order of the June 20th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, recorded by ACMI. First on our agenda this evening is a uh, continuation of discussion as far as the housing production plan put in front of us. Uh, Jane, do you want to get off there? Absolutely. Um, so this is the continued discussion. We have received some feedback, and I believe there also may be people here who might wish to provide additional feedback. I was actually going to put this over to Laura, who can walk us through some of that feedback, and I believe there may be something in front of you to that effect. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Mike Kerr um, went through the, the draft and made a number of comments, and um, I'm going to just walk you through them. They're not that extensive, and some of them are kind of carried through, so I don't think it'll take very long to do that. Um, they're not, uh, I mean, they're subtle changes, but I think they do make a difference, and I, I, I don't want to speak for Mike, just, I'm sure you'll speak for yourself, but I think he felt like it made it more responsive to the master plan, primarily, was the main gist of it. Um, so on the first page, the only change is, um, from what had been a moderately dense suburb, he began to change to a, a dense suburb. Yeah, just above that, uh, instead of with large family households, just a larger family household. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a typo, suburb. but maybe not. Yeah, they have to typo. <coughs> okay, and then on page seven, there's there's a, there's a couple of copies up here, if you want, of, the, of just the changes, if that answers. Um, this is a change that was made throughout the document. So instead of saying encourage mixed income housing and mixed use development, mixed income housing through mixed use development. And I think that is reflective of the master plan, which was that we wanted to encourage mixed income housing in the, in the um, commercial corridors with commercial. Uh, and I, I'd say that that's a change that was made maybe Four or five times. Yeah, at so least. Yeah, it's probably like eight yeah. to ten. So that takes care of a lot of the changes that we make. Um, uh, the next one: integrate affordable units and a range of housing types into the fabric of Arlington's existing neighborhoods for redevelopment of certain underutilized properties, not just underutilized properties. Um, and number three at the bottom is again uh, multifamily through mixed use. Now on page eight, um, mixed income through mixed use again. Uh, excuse me, you yes. don't seem to be reflected in the Right here, right here. Uh, right here. Bad back here. Yep, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Um, and then the number seven is again multifamily through mixed use. Um, number 14 on page 8, um, consider establishing a municipal housing trust fund instead of establish a municipal housing trust fund. And I think um, Mike was remembering that we did try this once before and it wasn't successful. So he did, didn't want to just put it in yeah. there as if it was the first time we ever thought about it. Um, that's it. Change on page nine is pretty subtle. I don't know if you feel otherwise. But. Yeah, it's just. <coughs> yeah. Um, page 59, goal two encourage mixed income housing through mixed use development in business districts. And then in that second set, in the second line, basically adding while preserving the commercial base. So uh, the message being to look very selectively and carefully at some industrial zones. For potential to make mixed mixed use districts, but not wholesale. All industrial should become um, should allow residential. Right. Yeah. No. I, I think I think the key there, and, and we talked about this in our mixed use discussions, is is really protecting the commercial base and not you know encouraging mixed use as far as residential is concerned, rather than straight up residential. And again, that's, the, that's reflected again in goal three. Um, and now page 61 were some bigger changes. Um, do you want to explain why you... Sure. So on strategy two, um, we do... 
the lead up to strategy two does say the town can help address the issue with zoning amendments as follows. So it's not saying that the town should do it. However, I still think that the bullet points taken alone with just an allow or adopt is, is more um, definitive than I, what I would suggest. I think as, as the implementation committee gets together and this board gets together, that we do need to consider all of these things and in respect of accessory dwelling units, certainly reconsider. Um, but, um, uh, but that's why I think we should kind of qualify each one with a consider, reconsider, consider, consider. I was also going to put explore on there. <laughs> but, uh, but I think, I think if, this, if, we, if we put that in there, then I think we get a better flavor for the exercise that should really happen before you know, we definitively say that it should be allowed or it should be adopted. So that's the same. Good. Um, page 62. Again, multifamily through mixed use. That same change in three places on that page. And page 63. Um, same change again. Mixed income through mixed use development. And that, I believe, is it. So it's really, it's really not a lot of changes. But um, they are. You no, know, I. <clears throat> I think most. I think those changes are good. They are substantive, and I think um, they, they achieve some of what we had discussed last week, as far as creating this, making this more of a toolkit. To specifically mm -hmm. Everything that comes out of it will have to go through committee, will have to go through discussion of some sort. Um, just because it's in there doesn't mean it necessarily has to be used, but having that table makes sense. Especially the changes of it as far as consider these things, not hard and fast rules that they've done. Yeah, and if I, if I can just comment. So <clears throat> most of these changes that I made are kind of follow up what I said last week, which I, I thought that the plan, while good, just didn't quite go through the Arlington filter a little bit, um, or what we've tried in the past. It, it just didn't read like, you know, it, it read new for a lot of these things, and we have tried different things and, you know, everything else. So uh, that was important to me. I, I think the other thing that I, I'll mention again, because I think I mentioned it last time, was I think one of the potential issues with the report itself is that it's, it's, it's using an average number that I think skews a little bit higher because it includes Brigham's and it includes SIMS in the average number of housing units that are created in any particular year over the course of the last 10 years. So because of those large developments, it skews it um, from, a, from a mean perspective. So I think we've got some work to do in order to actually add housing. And I think We've all discussed it, and we all, but the way to do that is through mixed use development on the commercial court. And I think that should be really hit home and the focus of this thing. And by my changes, which are subtle, I, what I tried to do was really put the emphasis on, you know, that, that the way we're going to do this in the next five years is really through encouraging that mixed use development of the commercial court. So that's, that's my view on that. Can you do I just want to bring up one issue just to talk about us because you know I'm not, I don't have as much history of, as Mike does as all the history of all these, yeah. all these different studies. But I was thinking of maybe adding a different another strategy, and uh, one of those is maybe uh, encouraging uh, affordable housing uh, proponents in, in Arlington. Uh, What's, the, what's it called again? Housing Corporation of Arlington. Housing Corporation Maybe they can go after and maybe do some joint ventures with existing uh, property owners and property owners in certain strategic areas where they can assist those property owners in getting certain things permitted and things with in mind that um, there will be inclu uh, inclusionary housing incorporated into that. 
So let's say someone who has some property in Arlington, but doesn't all different steps to go through it, doesn't have to uh, realize all the value of the property. So it's, it could be a win-win for both sides, and that's something that we can just put into that sort of spells it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. They, they touched on a little bit there, Mike. Yeah, they got but, it right in 12. Yeah, but it, it, it's not exactly, you know, I, I want to just bring it out a little more clearer than that, you know? Yeah, I think you want something more than mechanisms. You want actual, you want par partnerships. To Correct. And introductions. Yes, and, and, and this way here, there's, there's actual, a, more of a grassroots way of actually doing it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's a win-win for people who own property, but they don't really know what they're doing. They may have a one-story building or... Or, or something that they have from, from generations, and you know, and they, yeah, and then this way, uh, this housing story can help streamline it, getting a process through, and they might, might uh, through that uh, partnership, might uh, develop more uh, affordable housing units in this mixed-use housing. Now I'm talking about one house, two house. I'm yeah. talking multifamily. So I, I don't know. I just bring it up. Yeah, well, see. just doing a quick, quick. Very quick read through of the full text of strategy 12. We're on page 72. I think. I'm actually on 67. 67? Yeah. I'm going to the full the text. The narrative, you know. Yeah. Um, we may I have to go through it and see what kind of language you could put in there, but I think definitely that's something that could be explained in full text of the narrative. It's an idea to bring it up here. Yeah, no, 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 I think it's a good one. Could we just add and private entities? And I'm thinking also. Yeah, I mean, the, the majority of that discussion focuses on a, well, a right instead of trust. But I think if we focus also on, on partnerships to be developed in there, that's a, that's a good signal to whatever implementation committee is put together in the next few months that that's something we'd like to see them do. Public private partnerships? Is, yeah. that, is that acceptable to you, Ken? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, I think it also encourages you know, not having one project all affordable housing, all it, it, it actually it's integrated, which is I think is a much better way of um, of developing uh, inclusive housing. So you could say something to the effect of, and oh sorry, in, in number twelve, explore mechanisms uh, on page eight, just in the in the forefront here. Just I mean, and then you can flow through the strategy twelve sixty seven. But the first time strategy 12 comes up is on page 8. And I think you could say explore mechanism and work to facilitate creation of affordable housing ownership opportunities through the HCA, community land trust model, or partnership with other private nonprofit organizations um, and entities, essentially. So it's not just nonprofit organizations, it could be entities as well. So I think if you did both of those things there, you said private nonprofit organizations and entities, and put and work. So it's not just mechanisms, but we actually put some effort into it as well. Yeah. So I think maybe that will well, for that, those things. Mm -hmm. there. But also, I'm talking also with uh, actual funding. Well, no, no, no. uh, where you would, you would have, we have, you know, it's a true partnership. It's not just someone who just talks it and just say, okay, you need to do this, you do that. I'm talking about someone who actually truly go into partner up, say, here, you know, we will help with some of the, the permitting process, some of the after funding this, you know, the hard costs and some of the soft costs. Well, okay. It's I guess so I was trying to, that's why I was trying to use an active word like work. Yes, I, I'm not sure exactly yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just hoping you guys help me out here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's why I was trying to do an active word, word like work, uh, explore mechanisms and work to facilitate. I thought you said facilitate creation and make that explore mechanisms. Yeah, yeah, more, yeah, more yeah. If you just start it there, yeah. yeah. They oppose it. They oppose it. Mr. Ward, you'll have your turn to speak as any chair. Keep quiet, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that one. I'm not quite sure what the wording about. You know what my, my meaning is. Yeah, I, I think part of that's just something that Okay, are you sure? Okay. Yes, okay. That's great. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we will take questions from the audience now. Uh, not a public hearing, but question and answer is, is fine. Winnell Evans, Orchard Place. 
Um, I, I think Mr. Kerr uh, used a great phrase that they haven't necessarily applied the Arlington filter to this yet. I feel like the, this is a little bit of a one-size-fits-all for a dense community that kind of gets us on a path towards Somerville or Cambridge, which I don't think is what the master plan indicated people want. Um, and then I have two very specific comments on um, page 56, down at the bottom of my copy. Uh, it says that there were 56 teardowns between 2013 and 2015, indicating those units did not suit market demand. And I don't mean to be cynical, but I think it's likely that a good portion of those did not suit developer needs or desires. There, there are a good number of houses that have been torn down uh, strictly to build you know, larger, uh, more expensive places. And the other thing I wanted to comment on was the accessory units which was raised twice during the public comment period of the master plan and was rejected twice by residents during that comment period. So I'm a little dismayed to see this pop back up again. And I think that the stated wish to preserve and protect established neighborhoods is going to be threatened if accessory units are allowed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I agree, um, to an extent, and that's why I uh, put in the word explore. Oh, I'm not sorry. Uh, reconsider. Consider. And it's just that it 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 if we're having an affordable housing issue, we should take things off of the table. As far as I'm concerned, we should always talk about them and have a conversation. And it's in my world, it's not it's not right to take things off of the table that should be. Now, I can tell you that it's if it does come up, it's not something that I probably, it, it would need to really be something new for me to, to really feel good about it, but I have no problem saying that, you know, we should always reconsider things. There's no reason to take things off the table. That's why I changed it the way I did. So I'm just giving you the reason for my change. So. Chairman, sorry. John Ward and Jason Street, um, we're just taking up Mr. Kerr's point. I want to thank Mr. Kerr for going through this and, and um, finding, I don't know if Mr. Belsky has sent you his list of comments. Um, he but, did. Uh, Those were received by the board late, late in the day today. Yeah, well after I did mine. Okay, yeah. you, you should, um, you, you, you should um, pick this up. But, um, but I appreciate you putting a little Arlington filter on this, but um, <coughs> let me uh, start right at the beginning of the executive summary. <coughs> Uh, and the other, the other filter that, that should be applied, not just the master plan, which is important that they think about that, uh, is, is the, the open space plan. And you start off the report saying that Arlington has ample green space when our, our open space reports for years have said we need more green space, we need to preserve green space. We haven't got nearly enough green space. I mean, ample compared to what? Chelsea and Everett? I mean, come on. Um, then um, uh, the, the accessory apartment thing, um, uh, oh, you know, when that came up, the first time it came up and was decisively rejected by town meeting, an amendment that I proposed was okay if they are rented at affordable rents. They haven't mentioned, they haven't mentioned that here. We didn't mention it either, Mr. Kerr. Um, you know, if we're talking about affordable housing, and we're saying that we're going, going to turn every, we're going to consider t turning every single family neighborhood into a two-family neighborhood, but we're not going to require that those be affordable units. Are we throwing out the baby with the bathwater? Um, the, um, the other point I noticed that throughout the document, they're talking about the 10% 40B requirement. But we have met, you know, we have met the 1.5% requirement. The selectmen have adopted that position and it's been asserted in, in, the, in the thing at Lowell Street, it's been asserted with respect to the New Guard thing. So all this talk about we got to build, build, build to meet that 10%, that's irrelevant. That's off the table. That is off the table. And we, I think, want that off the table. Um, now, and, and um, getting down to the, uh, the there is a, a mistake uh, that even Mr. Kerr's eagle eye didn't catch, 
uh, uh, Section 1108, as amended um, in 07. Where, where are you looking at? That one? Uh, uh, 1108 of the zoning bylaw. Oh, you, you say there's a mistake. On page 62 of the of the um, uh, of the current edition, and it's it's not changed. It's now on page 63. Where they talk about the inclusionary zoning bylaw. They are still quoting the old percents. The percents are now. Um, uh, I, um, I know what you're talking about. We changed the. They are 60 and 70, not 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 changed, 70 and 80. Um, the income limit is still 70 and 80, but the affordability is set at 60 and 70. Well, but, but that's not what it says here. It only says that the affordability, that households who purchase them have to be at 80% for ownership and 70% for rental, and that is correct. No, that's, uh, with respect, it, it's 60% it's and, and 70 60 and 70 determines how the rents or the purchase price is determined, yeah. not the buyer. It's called the window of affordability between the two. So right. I'm just going by what the bylaw says, and, and I, I submit that, it, that, 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 that if, 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 there are, if there are these two percentages here, which are, uh, you say so, but I think they, they both should be expressed. The point that whatever the percentages are, the, the idea of this making the developers provide some affordable units, and that's why we push the number down to make them more affordable to, to the people who really need it. Uh, that was the purpose of this inclusionary zoning bylaw. Um, and now to expand it to say we should expand it to help out the, the, the lower middle class or however you want to define them, people making up to 120 percent of median, um, that may be a worthy goal, but that's not what the inclusionary zoning bylaw was designed to do. If you want to help those folks, what you should do, as uh, uh, Evans uh, 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 referenced, is adopt a policy that prevents developers from scooping up little possibly affordable houses that may go for 400 or so and tearing them down and building huge houses uh, when those are the kind of houses that could be bought by people who are near that edge and maybe with a mortgage subsidy program like they have in the city of Newton. That, that would help those people and it would not, it, it would not uh, uh, make it tougher for the people who really need a lot of help because they're really poor. I, I, I would suggest uh, that uh, the um, and the accessory apartments. And well, we already talked about that. That's uh, uh, anyway. I, I, I would suggest that those those changes uh, uh, need, need, need need to be made, and, and that they, and that the, the review and incorporation of the elements, not only the master plan but the open space plan, which has been adopted by town meeting. Overall, I really like uh, uh, name and address. Oh, please, Steve Revelax, Sunnyside Avenue. Uh, overall, I really I like some of the ideas in here, uh, particularly using um, mixed use development to uh, provide affordable housing and also catering to a wider range of AMIs. Um, and I I also I agree with Mr. Tier. I think that um, accessory units or accessory buildings are worth exploring. Um, I think they could be uh, useful, in, at least in terms of providing rental units. Could I say one other thing? Um, when you're talking about the cooperation, as Mr. Mr. Lau mentioned, cooperation with, with outfits like HCA, uh, I think you ought to consider, uh, indeed, cooperating with the biggest affordable housing outfit in this town, the Housing Authority. That's, that's part of that strategy of 12 that we were looking at, or not that one. Which one's the It's not very specific. AHA? Um, it's the action plan number six, among others. Six. Number six. Whatever that was. Um, what I was going to say is 
say when we started asking what to do next is we can accept these comments and we'll do our best to fold in what we can, including the work of the board. And we'll give that back to NAPC so that they can produce a revised document. Um, but the step tonight is whether or not you are going to adopt the plan. Once it's adopted, then it moves on to the Board of Selectmen, likely at their July meeting. Those are the steps that need to be taken, and that's up to, up to the Board. I would make that one last and, and, and any other, like, editing or, you know, typos or anything along those lines that you find along the way, you can send to us. So these are, it would be as amended, should you choose to adopt that. Yeah, um, you want yeah I, I mean, you know, uh, point taken on the open space and the ample green space, we never have enough. Um, so I would actually suggest that's a good comment, and we should just take out ample, ample green space off of the first sentence there. So it just says, Arlington has a barber, walkable town with good schools. You could say a few trees if you want. Uh, no, uh, in close proximity, proximity to Cambridge and Boston. So I think, I think that makes sense. I think the other comment was about um, exploring accessory dwelling units as affordable. Well, I, I th you know, and I, I think that's, there are that's other, fine, but there are I just... other municipalities that do that. Well, so and I think that's all part of the mix. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how that's not part of the conversation, right. you know, when when it comes up. Uh, it, there's, I don't know that there's any reason to delineate that particular thing mm -hmm. um, when a whole bunch of other things need to be talked about. I mean, is it an out, outbuilding? Is it inside? I mean, there's a lot I think to talk every, about. And every strategy that comes up for implementation will be done through yeah. the plans. So and through hearings and everything else. Okay. Okay. Um, Do we want to adopt Mike's changes and have those incorporated in the plan? Be in favor of we would just hold in those changes into one adopted plan as amended. Okay. No, and, and any further, I mean, I don't know what other amendments might come before us. So if you have any other typographical, no. mm -hmm. I think you've provided everything so far. Okay. So um, I'll make a motion to adopt. Is that the word? That's adopt. Uh, I'll make a motion to adopt uh, the Arlington Housing Production Plan uh, as amended through the um, uh, changes presented this evening, as well as the ones made this evening um, uh, by the Arlington Redevelopment Board. So, before we vote, I should ask: it goes from here as adopted, and, as amended, and adopted to the selectmen. That's right. Does it come back to us? No, if they have any it doesn't. Questions? No, I mean, if they had a question, if they had, if they had, or they had an issue, sure, okay. yeah. You okay. could also choose to attend one of you or two of you could choose to attend yeah. that board. Meeting. Of, they're probably you know, that, that yeah. would be helpful. Okay. 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 I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Next up is a continuation of public hearing from. Our last meeting uh, for 93 Broadway Springboard Schools. Of course, uh, come forward and have a seat. Reintroduce yourself to the board. Thank you. Thank you.
Right, and, and the previous one also indicated that some parking would be allowed on the Thompson side of North Union Street, but it's not, so I scratched that sentence at the end as well. So minor edits. Parking policy procedure is tracking through this five and seven different spots. So, um, where we start? Yeah. Where we left off. So, my name is Heath Brown. I'm on the architect team. Um, and at the last meeting, the conversation really focused on the number of parking spots we were providing <coughs> on the site. Um, and the board asked us to address several items for this continuation. One was officially submitting a transportation demand management plan, which we have, and I think you all had a chance to look at it, I hope. Um, the second was a transit statement and policy sheet from Springboard Schools, which, um, again, was already submitted. Uh, and the third was to have a meeting with the traffic committee about what will happen to the on-site, the, the street parking, once all the curb cuts are, are taken away and the curb is just put back. Um, I had that meeting with Howard Hughes. Um, I have a good one on that. And in addition, <coughs> our, we did a walking survey um, of a 600 foot radius around the site, counting and measuring all the available on street parking spots. Um, and you have not seen that, but that is there, and I can talk about that as well. But maybe the best thing is to just open it up to questions based on um, the previous meeting. Ken, you had the most concern last time, so again, you. Uh, so when you talked to the uh, DPW, did they, uh, what did you say about um, having a, a lead in for a drop off and pick up uh, aisle along uh, uh, North Union Street? So we, we talked to Howard about about that we were trying to figure out how many parking spots would be on that side street and what we what we ended up with was he felt that it wasn't really necessary to do an inlet there and that making a wider sidewalk was probably beneficial based on the entrance on that side of the street for parents coming and going with strollers and bikes and so we have a seven foot wide sidewalk on that side which is a little bit wider than what's recommended in a complete streets um, a package that we actually referenced with City of Boston, so we finally Arlington, but um, for a neighborhood street, um, this here is this here is a seven foot wide sidewalk. This is a ten foot wide sidewalk, and and so that's yeah. the other the other issue is worth. Uh, proposing to reuse the existing building. So in order to have a cut in, we'd really be squeezing, if we kept that existing building with the foundation on right there, we'd really be pinching the side of the building. So we're kind of reluctant to do that if we could get, with Howard's comments, we can get three car parking spots right there, which is great. It brings our total up to four at the permit on the streets. Those are four of the spots. So the spots you get shown before the front are with the, the corner. Yeah, here? You, yeah, he's saying you can't park there, right? Well, that's a bus. <laughs> it's a bus. Yes, yeah, so that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, but what we've done, and he suggested, is we flipped the flagpole arrangement yep. on the, and so now it protects this bus drop off point, the you know, bus stop, as its own thing. So, whereas before we had the driveway coming up here, I'm going to park in the spot there. This totally protects the bus spot. It's, 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 which we thought was a good thing. From our own but Ken, does that make sense over there? Did, did that answer your question? That answered my question. Okay. Because I, I, I just between the last meeting and, and today's meeting, I did have a chance to go over there. Yeah. And, uh, the sidewalk is, 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 is not enough room from the existing building. 
and uh, and and we curve that you have a, a drop off group that would make any sense and say that's right. right. For you to walk by it doesn't make sense. And uh, so that I agree with. I, I think it, what it is, it is right there with, mm -hmm. uh, with those, those new spaces. Um, I'm still telling you, I still feel very uncomfortable with you guys only having three spots uh, uh, parking on, on, on site there, okay? One of them being handicapped. That means you're not counting that handicap for everybody, it's only for a handicapped person. Mm -hmm. Use <laughs> all right. So you really, if you look at it, you know, I say what eighty percent of the people there, or maybe ninety percent, don't have handicap plates. They're going to be using that to drop off. Mm -hmm. So you just think we two spots. I I I, 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 I thought I made it fairly clear that I was really encouraging you to add one more spot at least in that parking lot there, such that it would relieve. Some some of my issues about not having a parking lot for that building there, okay? It, it just, you have a hundred students there. I, I know I what I read here and what's going on there, and yes, the neighborhood, there's a lot of parking around the neighborhoods, okay? Yeah. But also part of us is not to, not to change the character of the neighborhoods by, by imposing all this parking in all the neighborhoods there. Sure. Uh, okay, so, I mean, yes, there, there is ample parking around there, but, you know, all of a sudden, you know, someone who lived there for years now have this influx of parking, maybe, say maybe, okay, because I don't know, yeah. I'm not sure, during pickup and, and drop-off that they didn't have before. I, I'm just trying to consider all the neighbors around there, too, okay, and, and, and some of the feelings. I just felt strongly that, and I still feel strongly that you, you know, we don't have no parking there. So, so hey. how do you feel about the four on-street spots? Would you consider that part of you know, the additional parking that we're providing? Or is I, that I, I believe that that is, that is some additional parking there. Yeah. But also, I believe that's also seasonal too. All right, because I've been up and down Broadway um, during the winter time and when it snows. All right, and and, it, and those uh, those those snow mounds really build up after a while, and they really push the cars closer in. It's a pretty wide street right now, but when you when you go down there in winter time and people park. Next to the thing, I'm just thinking of safety too. Because when, you, when you're saying, okay, we can park out there now, we have to bring the kids up around these snow mounds and stuff like that. My, you know, I'm just sharing my personal, I'm not sure what the rest of the board is doing, okay? I'm just sharing my feelings to what, I'm, what I see here, okay? Now, yes, I understand there's uh, there's four additional partners and stuff, but yes, okay, good. Ken, what I um, what we were going to propose okay. um, is uh, you remember when we first met. Um, we discussed that in the 28 years we've been at Gibbs, we've run studies in terms of our pickup and drop offs. We've, we've done it internally for ourselves and we've done it for the town when we prepared our RFPs and, and they, we incorporated that spreadsheet here. Um, and that's what, that's what led to the, the amount of parking spots that the architects put in. Okay? So to address your concern though, that let's assume that the habits of families change and you know, maybe that increases. And what we thought made sense is give us some period of time. You know, we proposed, say, 12 months. And if, in fact, we do need that additional space, I'm willing to put it in, you know, to, you know, to accommodate what you're, the concern that you have. And we will. We'll put it in. Um, in fact, when, when, the, when the architects designed it, they, you know, they, there's a, I think they even, prepared something to show what we would do in the event that that was the case. Well, I can describe it. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I think that what we would do is we would take a spot here. It's 24 feet. It will it will work. It meets the dimensional requirements. Ideally, I'd like to put the handicap spot here, but that's not going to work because you have to ramp up to get to um, the entrance. and. Uh, that would push all of this that way even more, and we're kind of right at the borderline of the amount of green space we'd like to have to have a class outside. Um, so we would put another spot there. We'd still have some greenery blocking, you know, buffering it from the street. Um, um, if you would put, say, one or two additional spots, 
in that green zone, right? With that, uh, you still make the criteria for having enough open space and green space for the project? Uh, it's the answer, I think, uh, from our point of view, and Zeke, you can speak from the architectural point of view, is um, it, I mean, it, it will we'll function, we'll, we'll be able to operate, but as we drove down, you know, we're coming from the front at the Gibbs, if you know the Gibbs, I mean, there's almost no green space. There's a couple of sandy playground spots out in front, but there's zero green space. So we're hoping, and to convince the board, that we really want to maximize the green space. Because if you, when you drive down Broadway, there is almost no green space that, you know, in that area, you know, in terms of this area that we're in. So we, yeah. we're just hoping to maximize it. I mean, it's, it seems like that is more of a general public amenity than one or two spots. No, I, I applaud the green space. So no, that's, that's, that's great, but yeah. I'm just speaking purely through the zoning requirements of uh, the open space, do you still need open space requirements? Yeah. If you add I, I believe we do. I believe we would. I'd have to look at that specific question more closely, but I think we're not increasing. I mean, it's all it's all permeable right now. I know, but so I don't think you have to make it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's well, that's yeah. Yeah. I don't know the exact percentage that would go away as a result of cutting in for a parking spot. Yeah, just I would just encourage the board to um, to listen to the interests of this particular group and what they're interested in doing, how they run their facility, how they've been running the history of running that facility, and this opportunity that they now have to develop something new, and perhaps sort of with a more refined approach to how they do the parking and how they manage that with their staff and also with their clients. So I just would, I understand that the the limitations and the the limits of that, but I just it, hope that you can hear that side of it as well. Thank you, Jenny. I, I, I just want to point something else to the board that maybe you don't know much about us as an organization, huh? that Mary Ann and Nicole Ryan, they, and you can feel free to ask them questions about the the, the time of drop-offs and how many, you know, you know, we've studied this, we know this very well in terms of how often families pick up and drop off. But as an organization, um, we, you know, our tuition is significantly lower than the in, any of the other centers on the center part of town or the heights part of town. Um, and we, we could easily raise our tuition levels 30% and still be below some of these other facilities that are in town. But we choose not to do that. We, do, we don't do that because, I mean, we know that, you know, if you look at that income period, there's a lot of families that just simply can't afford that. So, I only mention that because one of the what's extremely important for us on our end is our budget. You know, we have a, you know we're not rich people. We don't have a we, you know our bank is behind us, but it, it's we have to be very careful with our pennies in terms of doing this project. And I want to emphasize that to the board. That's important to us. Just a point of order. Also, if we could have everybody introduce themselves. Sorry for the minutes, yeah. and also Andy as well. Yes. Yeah, Josh Finalis, we're Josh Finalis. Uh, Zeke Brown, <laughs> Brown for Lost Architects. Nicole Lowry, Program Director at Rector. Mary Machaki, Founder of the School and also Executive Director. Uh, and with the school here. And we're here. <laughs> Just throw it out there. Yeah. Right. Kevin Flanders, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to monopoly this whole conversation. Uh, I'm just going to say, I think I would honor your promise. And if you were to uh, incorporate that in part of this, uh, part of this approval, that if within a year it was found that uh, additional parking was required, that you put it in, I would support this. You know, I, I like this project. I think it's a great project, and you know I'm open. Okay, I would support that. Okay, and I just like that that be part of the records. Uh, that's yeah, cool, right? It, it, it is. Um, I was just moving. In, in the special condition number three, it's actually in your packet, we say that if vehicle usage increases, the owner will work with the planning director or designate to further reduce vehicle usage rather than finding a parking spot for more vehicles. Try to work out more means to reduce the vehicles. So Remember, I, also let me add that in the, at Gibbs, we talked about this last time, yeah. but 
there's no parking there. Yeah. We, we actually have very strong incentive plans with our staff and our families to not drive or bring cars. And um, so that's something, it, it works for us in particular, and it's an important feature for us. Um, I've said enough about parking already. I'm going to show you guys. Uh, but yes, I, I would I'd be, I'd be open to any claim uh, with that. Okay. And if we do one more thing. Uh, I just also request if you guys can also put a gate uh, in your trash areas. I'm sure you were going to put something there any security area, so is yeah. there going to be a gate there that, that would yes. shield uh, yes. the dumpsters and the trash from people walking by? Absolutely. We don't want trash to be seen by anybody either in the building or It just doesn't show that. I just don't, I should ask him. Yeah. on page two, condition five, there's a landscaping plan, uh, a condition that the landscaping plan be approved. There is a submitted landscaping plan, and um, I think Zeke wanted to know if that was sufficient or if um, yes, I we needed, yeah, if the board wanted to see something else. Just a note about the gate covering the, uh, the dumpsters. Where, where is that at the gate? That's in the back. Right there. Right in the service area. Yeah. Yeah, we can do uh, yeah. Yeah. We can certainly add information on the gate. Yeah. Well, it depends on the file. It's a nice project. Yeah. So does that sufficient for the board? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we know condition five. Yeah. And then also condition six, there was um, some information submitted about um, uh, not a lead checklist, but um, information about environmental impacts and um, some green actions that we're going to be taking in the design. So just to, it, it's in the um, in the criteria that was submitted. Run to grow looks like this. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you're Number suggesting 12. just just taking out the narrative, explaining yes. the okay, starting there, but keeping the lead stuff. Well, I think I, I guess I ask you what, if you if this is sufficient for you, or if you want to use the lead checklist. The, the document was provided last week. Looks like this. It says um, environmental design review. Thank you, bro. And the last number twelve on page two. Sustainable building and site design. It's not going to be a lead building, obviously, but we have sometimes required a checklist. So you guys, are you, are you guys lead? Uh, you guys no, lead? we don't. We are not lead certified. What are you, engineers? Uh, no. This could easily be a lead project. <laughs> it is a lead project. I mean, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. and, well, and yeah, right I think thing. we we main thing is doing the right thing. Yeah, we right. agree with what lead is trying to do, and but we're not going for lead certified. No, I think we so want to save you the money because we're thinking that piece of paper is like $30,000, not worth it. Thank okay. you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've been there myself and it was just uh, a ridiculous thing. Uh, would you have someone that is a lead AP that can say it's lead certifiable? We, we know plenty of architects in our group who uh, we could probably pull in and ask. Um, this is question. what we're trying to right. avoid, just because right. it adds a level of uh, it's, uh, yeah, but I, it's just a checklist, though. It, it just it's, not, right. it's not being certified. It's just yeah. a checklist. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's problem is present. Pretty much happy yeah. here. Yeah. I don't get it. These are substantial. And that's, lead that's items. why I, yeah, that's why I asked if Laura the question if this is checklist. sufficient. I don't know if you guys can do I think this is sufficient. Yeah, I don't know about you. So, okay. Well, this is 
it, it mirrors the checklist, but it's written in a different format. So you'd be accepting something that's slightly different than what others have presented in the past. Do you, I mean, let me put it just succinctly. Do you, do you think that such a precedent would put us at a disadvantage later? Right. That's the only thing I'm worried about is that everybody has to fill it out. But you've got it. All you have to do and is put this in a different it format. Into a different format so. and these are very substantial. So, yeah. so staff is is confident that that you could get the same information from any project and feel like you were getting kind of a little chuckle. It, it's equivalent. It's okay. can that information be transposed? Uh, that's what I would do. Yeah, I think just, we're I think we're suggesting will you. You know, take the information that you provided, but put it into the actual format and the checklist. And you have the format. Yes. Yeah, 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 it's all online. Yeah. 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 And I say we leave right. that portion of it yeah. Yeah. and simply so we'll just keep that in the narrative explaining yeah. the positive environmental impacts of the project. Right. I think that's what we're saying. You don't need because we've got enough. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. Yeah, I can read. So it'll, it'll now say, six will now say, applicant shall provide a lead checklist to the director for review. Correct. There were some suggested amendments that we also received, I think, late in the day uh, regarding some of these, which the uh, transportation plan management plan. No, this no, is the, actually to no. the special. Do you want to talk about that, Marian? You suggested changes. I mean that they're. That's right. Before you forget, they're they're. I would say they're minor in nature. And if anything, they're clarifications. It, I mean, the the um, mostly all we were trying to do here is. Um, <coughs> There are some things that are a little bit unknown um, in, in terms of, for instance, you know, like the bicycles. You know, right now, Zeke is telling me that he thinks he can get 12, but it could be 10. But we, so it might be between 10 and 12. Where are you putting them right now? Yes, yeah, so there's going to be two spots. Um, we've got right there. Yeah. We've got cover. We've got two cover spots. They're not drawn in the plan. And but we're all for that. But basically, there. right yeah. in here and then additional. Right. So they're both, it's all covered. How many? Uh, that will take 10. Um, and actually, five on the left and six on the right. So I like the strategy of assessing where you are, because you've got to operate this thing most efficiently. Obviously, it's here. Put more bikes in if you had to. Blue. Oh. Yeah, I mean, if that was at the middle, right, mm -hmm. right. Here, yeah, we talked about putting some in front. Uh, yeah, we're, I was thinking it. She's, she's a little bit of 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 a I could move this door down a little bit. We could get six there easily. Um, here, here we can. They wouldn't be um, pull-in spots. They would be two and two and two underneath the canopy, <laughs> which which gets us up to twelve like right away. Um, and you know we could. We've got a. a Sort of the sitting area here, but we could also do additional like bike parking under there if, if we wanted. But it's like right at the main entry, so it's not. Yeah, but the one on the side, you can use those that are well, uh, yes, what you know, people pick it up and drop it off. But that's where they come in and yeah, yeah. Well, up, I think I mean pull I the bike up and pick up the kids there. Or something I, like that. I mean, I envision a, 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 a handsome looking bike rack that's not one of those just steel bar things, but. But some sort of, um, you know, maybe a, a, a hoop that just is sticking out of a concrete curve in a in a nice sort of decorative way. That when they're not, when they don't have um, bikes on them, they're still an interesting, attractive thing to look at. Um, and Does Arlington have a bicycle standard um, bike rack? Well, we use this quote a lot, subsidized by MAPC. Um, those are the I wouldn't say this, yeah. 
There's nothing in the zoning, nothing in the yeah. no. no. So you know, we could do we could do bed animal shape. You know, we could get playful with it. You know, which I think which I think would be kind of cool. I just want to make sure we're not going to say something and then there's something <laughs> rule saying you have to do it this way and there's okay. Incorporated into the newer the version that was handed out. Yep. They're incorporated into that. It's 50% subsidy, which was one of the edits. They deleted 50%. Oh, you don't yeah. you don't you want to delete it. It's deleted. Okay. So so if I can go through it, yeah, the first deletion is 50% subsidy. This just came in like 530. Okay. Is that something that was you just got today? That's all right. There's my my mistake. Okay. So this suggests how do you get this? It just it came it's like 530 today. today. So employees will be offered a subsidy. For purchasing transit passes, learn to grow with facilitate purchasing transit passes for staff. C, on site cover parking for 12 bicycles will be provided. C, LTG will provide emergency ride home for employees who do not drive to the site. The public transportation is not available. This might include LTG funded tax repairs. I think there's maybe we go through the changes. The changes. Yeah, the first, first one is deleting the 50% okay. amount. I, I personally don't mind putting a number on. I like, I don't. Mind taking 50%. I'm leaving it a little bit more uh, uh, generic. I'm fine with it being open. Yeah. We do that. Yeah. It's the next one going on. Okay. So, right now it says in the event it is determined, it, it had said it, in the event it is determined by planning director, other town staff, or LTG management that on street parking demands increase, the following procedures will be implemented. Right now, it just says in the event it is determined without who is making that determination. And I don't think that works because I don't think we need to have a fight about who's going to determine that. So I would suggest that we actually put back in that particular provision. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. that and that's typical procedure mm -hmm. yeah. for these things. Because back someone needs to decide. Yeah. The next one is. Families will be offered an incentive to not drive to the store for drop off and pick up. Once again, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I think we can leave it that for the discretion. Next one is keeping up refugee staff. They also meet children at their cars in order to facilitate shorter vehicle duration. Uh, that's actually a licensing issue. Okay. okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, I would, that I'm actually okay with that. Deleting that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about the number three? Is that something to delete? No, that's what we were proposing uh, to Ken about after the year. Yeah, you know, that's good. Keep that in there. Yeah, that's that change. Which, uh, well, uh, the, in this one? Item three, I think. So they're taking out that they have to do it annually. That's basically what the changes do. And you like yeah. that change? Um, versus what? What are they doing now? Well, there does it say then after that, right? It says after one calendar year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's, and then that's the end. After one calendar year period as opposed to annually, I mean, every, after every calendar year. I'm okay with you. I'm not going to. 
hold them up to them. Thank you. Yeah, it becomes a really onerous thing to be meeting them every year. I mean, after a year, I feel like you're either going to have it or you're not going to have it. I don't know. That's my feeling. Increases during the first year. That's basically what we're saying now, correct? Well, not increase. I'm not talking increase. It's determined after after a year that additional parking or some something Just needs right to be. Right now, it doesn't read that way. So oh, it looks like at sorry. any time, okay. if vehicle usage increases, this is what would happen. But that's not the case. So it's only really <coughs> oh, monitoring the yeah. okay. based on a survey. If vehicle usage significantly increases during the first year, right. what are we going to do? Okay. Yeah, okay. that's a good addition. Okay. Well, yeah. no, I, I don't. I, I don't yeah. think it significantly increases anymore because you only have one year. So it's if vehicle usage uh, requires, it's determined, it's determined yeah. to be yeah. one year. Uh, it's determined to be. More than as presented here, so basically, yeah, is determined to be. Um, so you don't like that. My, I, I would add, if, if I may, I, I would say that the reason I put the word significantly in is knowing that it's going to come back here for review. Um, I mean, so if it just increases, let's say if you look at my spreadsheet and it increased in one time slot by one car, then you would, you would, you would say it's not. It has, its, it has its increase, but not significantly. Mm -hmm. I think well, the, the word significant, from our perspective, from a self-interest perspective, if, if it happens, as you said, Ken. Why don't we, why don't we, maybe we can figure out how to word this, but I think the survey should be, once it's done, should automatically be presented to the director, and then it's up to the director to decide whether to, to bring it back for us. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, and the director determines. They will conduct a so survey and you will share it with yeah. the director at the one year. year. If at the director, director will conduct a survey. Contention upon results of survey, the yeah. director shall. Yeah. 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 And then the, then the procedure would be we would come back to, to, to review. No, no, just, no just, just, just with the Just with planning. That's just yeah. with yeah. staff. Yeah. 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 Only for the district. Okay. The trigger something that she'll bring it up. And again, that's. Procedure we typically use for these additional items after you've met with the board. You come talk to Santa Monica. It's more than welcome to talk to him about your survey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, okay, and that's, that was it. No, that was it. Yeah, but one. hold on. Um, so I'm just trying to do it. Non-vehicle travel to the site. Um, 
if the director determines that vehicle usage is increased to an extent requiring reconsideration, owner will work with planning director or designee to further increase on-site parking or reduce vehicle usage with methods including but not limited to. Yeah, that's, that was actually slightly what I was starting to edit in there, but okay. yes, I'm, I'm I'm okay with that. Again, that should cover your concern. If I can have enough questions, yeah. I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. And I can, I can uh, read it off to you later. Uh, a little message. Can we say that Kim's motion yeah. includes those conditions? Yes. 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 So I think. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank Good luck. Thank you. 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 because it seems like the neighbors, the massage envy has a sign similar size. This is the owner of the uh, uh, franchise. Amir Chaudhry, owner, European Wax Center, Arlington, 1398, Massachusetts Avenue, uh, under construction now. As Steve said, uh, we are, we understand that the, the largest allowable letter sign size of the uh, letter size of the sign is 13.5 inches based on the administrative sign review we're asking for 20 inch tall letters and um, we understand that massage it, it, basically massage envy and prime butcher are in the same building and they've set a precedent for the the sign size uh, massage envy looks like has 24 inch tall letters what we understand is that the, the criteria specifically stipulates that the height of the sign letter should be 24 inches and makes no mention of the total si size of the of the, uh, the height. And so uh, we believe that, that we're right in line. Our, our size would be the same size. Our sign would be right around the same size as the size that we and my butcher. And, uh, and we believe that that's, that's a good size to ask for. Um, so, what color is this going to be? What is it? How's this going to be? Uh, well, lit? when you during the daytime, you will see this. Yeah. This is a 3M film. That is black that has little white dots in it. So at night, when the LEDs go on, you will see this. So it's going to be white. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. when it gets dark at night, the light is going to be white. It's a black. It's a black sign during the day, and then it, it lights up uh, as well. Just just as uh, prime butcher next door will be lit up as well at night. Yeah, Not prime prime butcher. Sorry, mm -hmm. the metal uh, letters that's backlit. Uh, am I incorrect there? These letters are also. Not yours. I'm talking. I'm talking. Most likely, Prime Butcher is backlit, and I, actually, I think all the signs on the on the building are backlit. We're also going to be backlit. I think you meant from a solid front with backlit, like around the, you know, like a halo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm trying to yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing that we'll also have is a halo with uh, it's like a rose glow mm -hmm. halo also. Yeah, they're the same height as that. So, um, the, yeah. Laura, what's the what's the name of uh, yes. our sign? Um, 
Yeah. yeah. Sign sense. Sign, sign sense. sense. Have, you, have you looked at our sign sense guidelines? I have not specifically looked at what I'm dealing with nightlight signs as our as yeah. founder. We, we have um, sign sense guidelines that kind of lay out exactly what we'd like to see in signs. I think one of the things that we don't like, frankly, is I, this, I'm getting this from a former member, Bruce, uh, who uh, white letters at night is very distracting. Okay. Um, and it's, it's not something that we have, I'm trying to think, we've, we've discouraged that okay. in the past. Um, the, that, those materials were provided to Nightlight Science. Okay. Yeah. We, do, we do the glow behind the letter. We're not illuminating. No, they're yeah. illuminating. Inside the ending? Uh, I'm sorry, on this side. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. We normally don't. I mean, massage, <laughs> we don't normally allow Massage ending is, is, yeah. is a it's glowing behind it. It's not an illuminated sign. Yeah, I think I think two challenges you have yeah. is is number one, the the fact that I do think those might be like behind. But the other thing is is the double height. The double height, yeah. The double height on that is difficult. Um, so on ours or on, on yours? Okay. No, because Massage Envy is not double line. height. It's you one got, you're twice the size. Uh, well, Massage Envy has the, they have the 24 inch and then they also have some, they have uh, a like, wave. A, like a wave underneath. Yeah. And what we're proposing, our a wave. It has like a little uh, underlying wave kind of. Yeah, they change. Oh, that. Yeah, that's an old yeah. photo. Okay, yeah, so their, their, their height of, is 24 inches and they also have a wave, um, which we believe that ours is, is going to be a similar size. Uh, when, when combining both, combines, both our lines versus their both. Yeah, and I remember I remember that here. I do, I see. And it was somewhat controversial yeah, with the so wave. Yeah. But I think we got kind of comfortable with it because it was thin. It was thin. And it kind of, I mean, I guess I just look at that, and I guess from a, a I think if you were to look at our sign sense um, uh, materials, mm -hmm. that this probably doesn't comport mm -hmm. um, because it's taking up the almost the entire um, okay. uh, facade. Yeah. Okay. So that's not something. And once again, I'm, and I, I think if you'll you also see in there that it says you know a backlit, fully lit mm -hmm. um, white is discouraged yeah. because of distraction. So okay, so that's a good point. So the the color thing, I can absolutely. Yeah. take off the table because I was actually leaning towards just being black with the rose halo. Halo. Yeah. 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 That would be, that would be much. Yeah. You yeah. won't do white. And I, I was actually against the white. I was kind of tossed back into the white. I was brought back into the white. But is this your logo? It is European black I'm, I'm, I'm following up. It's a corporate logo. It's a, this is a franchise. Oh, is that is the corporate logo? Sorry. Do, yes. Is it, is it, it's clunky. European wax yeah, like it doesn't, it's it's the font. It doesn't it's even the line font. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, supposed so, be, it's, it's actually actually kind of like a, it is kind of yeah. not a good, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not a good sign. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're allowed. It's a, it's a franchise, there's 550 in the country now. Uh, the building and that is the, that is the, that's the, that is it. It's Can a little you bit, show me a picture uh, of another store? Yeah, I have, uh, I have a store in Westford. Show me, show me, I gotta see a real thing. It's actually easier to look at the one in Coolidge Corner. Uh, I'm not mind. sure if I have a picture of it handy. Oh, cool. Yes, you probably could. Let's see, because it's in the same it. sort of situation, but we're, we're in tucked in uh, literally right on Harvard Street. On Harvard Street? It's like you should have. Yeah. Works there. Yeah, it's like European or, or the other one should be the way massage it. They, they've got like two different, they emphasize one Y. Kind of. So European has given a little style and smaller and waxing or something. So you can see it's a little oh, yeah. offset. The, there you go. the words are offset, and it, that's that's the their design um, that we don't really. Yeah, I'm not good. Like, like I don't care so much about the design aesthetics. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be what I do if I started one. But uh, you start the, the not the franchise, but the company itself. You're not but, even using that, right? But logo. but I think <laughs> yeah, that's the actual. The, sorry, the logo, that's the logo. You'd be three lines. Yeah, no, that's the logo, but the, the actual uh, word, the letters are, uh, that's the sign. That's the way the signs are made. I, I can find, I can find the, an actual sign. That's the logo that you see on the website. Is this? May I make a clarifying point? Yeah. Andrew. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so the, the, the main issue here, other than, we can talk about the 
the lettering if you'd like to, but the main issue here that why it can't go through just my own review is that it's bigger than whatever had been approved the last time that it was here. Right. So it was Jim if, Craig? Yes, if, yes, exactly. If you wanted to, I don't know, previously. So if you want to instruct this applicant to shrink it a little bit, that might be an appropriate recommendation, but in terms of how they're the design of their corporate logo, I'm not sure we'll be able to oh. enable to. No, no, I, I, I was trying to get at something. So, um, but that, that's the main, the main problem right now. Take your overall height that you have on the Saj and, and and use that middle line and just float your two letters a little wider apart. Don't cram them all in and make the overall height. I'm suggesting maybe the same height as the. And do one line. No, oh, you can still keep it two lines. Yeah, okay. Because I don't think you're going to get it in one line. That's another yeah, line. That's, that was, we looked at one line as well. Yeah, it's yeah. too far, but if you can tighten it up. Yeah. Make a little more room between them so it's not all smooshed together. There's a certain design that, they, that we have to adhere to when we go to a corporate, uh, a corporate design. Um, I, I, I'm fine with making it the same size as, as Massage Envy. I, I think what our point is just we want to we want to have the same size as the other the other stores in the building. We don't want to be smaller than the others and be sort of engulfed and and not uh, be noticed. So, so I, I could get behind it if it, I'm not sure what Jim Craig had there before, but um, I do think that there is a need to kind of shrink it down. Shrink it down. Okay. Yeah. Shrink it down because right now it's taking up the full facade. Yeah. And uh, Jenny, I appreciate uh, that, and you know I think the the. Science Sense guidelines you know, to do that. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, when signage does come up, though, we all have our kind of pet peeves on it. So you, you definitely hear about that uh, whenever this happens. But, uh, um, but you know, I, I think, I, I, you know, the logo is the logo. I'm not going to, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to do that. But, but the two things that I would need to see is this get um, shrunk down probably by, you know, uh, maybe as much, you know, maybe like almost. I'd like to see what what it would look like as two thirds or or three fourths or you know yeah. the, those two different sizes. Mm -hmm. um, what one? What, what would that be? Three fourths. That's like three quarters. Or three quarters. Yeah, three quarters small. And, but no, uh, bigger, one no bigger smaller. than the overall jet, uh, massage end. Yeah. 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 I'm exactly. fine with that. It, it doesn't have to be bigger than the massage it, It's the beer bar thing. It's it's a special building development. Yes. Yeah. Pretty big sign. It does. It's got it a does. Style and then now yeah. it's got a flare to it. Fine. And I don't have a We've problem. With it. This one's just kind of for the so size. So this one, of yeah, the, this one's just getting out of the park. Okay. Even for the. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. So what if we came back and did the same overall sign height as Massage Envy? We took away the white and we just went black with the rose. With, with the, the gloves. Right. Yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. I think I'd yeah. also like to see some soft tonight. What if we went to like 15 inch letters? Well, Instead of 24? 15 is actually, no, ours right now That's is 20. Really 20 well. Or 20. Ours is 20 inch. I'd, I'd like to do a little bit more than 15 if it's possible. 18 <laughs> would be great. I think 18 is not going to be enough. Okay. 18 is not going to be enough. I think I'd like to see 15 or. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's appropriate. I, 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 I think you're looking at 15. That gives you like, this, this, is, this is 36. Yeah. And this is, you know. Well, this is like 42 and 43. Before it took up more than half of this space. Now it takes up like. Um, so we're taking 10 inches off it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I'd also like to see what it looks uh, like in context of the rest of the building. So that we, yeah, I noticed yeah. the Doctor's Express sign went out. Oh, did it? I'd did. like to see yeah. <laughs> what it looks like be back. there, there. Just oh, yeah. Fine. Yeah, yeah, did it go up and all and all the Doctor's Express, I was just there today, is. Is significantly smaller than Prime and Massage Envy. Okay. Um, I think I'd, I'd so still like to see what your proposal looks like in context with the yes. rest of the building. Yes. You've only given us this corner so far, air. The, the one full facade you gave us is blank. Um, you know, yeah. you can see all four signs in yeah. a row. Just give us one panoramic photo sure. that lets us know what it looks like. Okay. That might be better as far as being able to grasp. Overall height, not just letter height. Mm -hmm. When's our next meeting? It's July 11th. 
that going to hurt you? That would hurt. Where our construction is due to be completed. I'm going to be out of the country for, for about July 10th. July about having these guys. Administrative. Yeah, administrative review. And the, yes. If yeah. they trigger it, it picks up to the chairman. Yeah. So uh, what, what we can do is you can work with staff, with the director, to determine whether it's appropriate. And if she feels that it isn't, or her designee feels it isn't, you'll have to come back before us. Okay. But I think you can work with right. and show okay. Show her the overall elevation as Andrew sure, has yeah. suggested. Yeah, so we see how we authorize them to, to do it administratively. Okay. So that the letters would not be illuminated at night. No, here is it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. He's already reading it. They'll have black yeah. metal I'm just trying to understand with the glow behind it. Yeah. 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 And then about that shape. 15 inches. So the proportion works a little bit like with that. With spacing. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think it'll still be a strong size. It'll still be a good size. Context. I should have insulted the logo. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to. <laughs> it's okay. It's a 15 inch. Inch. Yeah. If, that, if that's, that's going, going to work for you, I think. Right. It's it's as long as. Okay. We're talking about a still a good size. And she'll have to pass it. She'll have to. The staff will have to approve it. I went on the same board and meet him for 40 years. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, fine. I'm fine with that. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, we still have to do it. So, okay. uh, I'll move to approve the sign as amended. So, 15 inch um, metal backlit um, and uh, uh, to work with uh, staff uh, for the director to approve. And provide an overall context. And to provide an overall context to the uh, director. Or her designee. 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 Absolutely. I take the 15 inch out just in case. Um, okay. Are you comfortable? I don't know if we can. That's the only thing. I think you're going to have to leave that in because of the I, way that the. Okay. I think we need to approve that. Review you know, okay. works. I think we need to approve that. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank Central School lease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go higher. One million dollars. See, that's why I just thought I should show yeah. it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, Central School <laughs> RP lease agreement. You have before you a lease with the Arlington Retirement Board for the ground floor space. You should have new packets. Um, that has been reviewed by town council, by the retirement board, um, by the panel, which includes Mike and Adam Chapteling, town manager. And it is ready for you to sign as presented so that they can move in officially on July 1st. <laughs> Okay. And start paying rent. All right. Hmm. I unfortunately didn't have a chance to go through this. Can you just go over the term and Absolutely. the rent to be paid? Okay, sure. The term is uh, to begin July 1st, 2016, and it extends through uh, June 30th, 2019. It is for 772 square feet, more or less, which is located on the ground floor. Um, it includes, actually, one thing that changed is we this space originally, when it was devoted to the Housing Corporation of Arlington, had one parking space devoted to it. Mm -hmm. That has since been increased to two, based upon our conversations. That is parking that's actually behind the Masonic building. Um, so it's not based at the Central School. Um, and the fixed rent, which is noted on page four, is $15,112.50, or monthly $1,259 and some change. There's also um, a suggested fixed increase in here for rent, um, and then they're also going to be paying operating expenses. 
and the capital contribution. I'm sorry, capital contribution, not operating expenses. The capital contributions. Is they're, not paying, they're not paying. Not operating expenses. expenses at all. My, no, my apologies. Capital, okay. The capital contribution is 50 cents per square foot of leasable space. Are they, do they intend to do any alterations, construction? Um, they can. They, they can't, can't do anything without the approval, oh, okay. without my approval, actually. So, it meets their needs. And I, my understanding is it meets their needs. They may okay. be moving some things around because right now there's some fixed, a um, couple of like fixed spaces in there that they might change, but nothing. Okay. But not dramatic renovations. Your office to All the approvals would run through my office. Fine. Right. Are they asking for any TI? What's that? No. Any money? No. They're just moving it. Okay. Yeah, it's as cool. is. I mean, that's that's essentially the way all of the leases work on is as is. Um, insurance? Are they carrying insurance? They have to provide insurance as well for the property, which not just for the entire property, but for their space that they're renting in the property. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yes. I'm glad. Just to be clear. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, we tried the full program. Yeah, I didn't think they'd <laughs> the town the kind of the full thing. No, no, no. Since it's, it's, it's still the town, it just didn't make much sense. No, either. it just didn't quite work. <laughs> okay. But actually, the only thing that changed, this is a model lease that we use with all of the tenants in pretty much all of the buildings that the town rents. Um, and the only thing that really changed in here was the parking space. Okay. We increased the parking space. And that's spot. acceptable. This is for yes, acceptable to, to the retirement. The other tenants. Yes. Most importantly, the manager. The Fine. other tenants, the parking spot. Yeah, but, but it was actually an unclaimed parking spot. Okay. <laughs> Shh, don't, don't, don't admit there were any of those. There might be others. Take that out. We're not I'm sure. Delete yeah. <laughs> that from the notes. Delete it. Well, they're currently being claimed by people posting uh, pieces of paper with masking tape on the signs. So okay. We'll, very we'll official. Actually need to clean that very up. Very separate item. So it's. Okay. it's it's been cleaned up administratively it now. It's yes. a non contentious I don't. Fine. Remove. So, um, so you would sign the lease as presented to the board. Yeah. So I move to uh, to authorize the chairman to sign the lease as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. So the other one is Mystic River Watershed Association, which you don't have before you. Um, I have been working with um, the executive director of Mystic River and working on um, the terms of the lease and also the exact uh, square footage of the space that they're interested in and uh, have come to some, and working on some negotiation with them in terms of the what they're interested in renting and I've presented to them uh, lease terms. They have not yet reviewed all of those lease terms in detail. They, the board looked at them, but more needs to be done. So I don't have something to present to you tonight. What I was hoping you could do is approve the chair's ability to sign that lease amendment, um, if that would be possible. Because it would actually be amending the okay. lease. You, right. You've amended, they have an existing lease because they currently lease space from us. You actually <coughs> amended that lease in February. Um, now you'd be amending it again to include additional space. Okay. Uh, I move to authorize the chair to amend the lease for Mystic River Watershed in the silver. Yeah, increased contiguous increase space or increased space in the separate space. Increase the contiguous. Yeah. Increase the contiguous space. space. To amend the these to increase contiguous space. I'll sign. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, the caveat there is they will. This will likely not. This will mean that they will not make any changes to their lease for July first. So we're not looking at August first. Just to be clear about that, it will likely not occur in the next week. <coughs> based upon <coughs> timing issues. So if something comes up, you could bring us to the July. I could potentially bring it back. Yeah. There's two July meetings. Actually. Two July meetings, great. Okay. So, All uh, right. And then the last uh, is that we're still working with Arlington Center for the Arts so, and uh, trying to uh, consider them as tenant for the third and fourth floor spaces that are still available. And we'll continue those conversations with the panel and reviewing doc additional documentation that was provided by the center. Um, 
that will be continuing into July. Okay. Um, one more thing <laughs> is it was brought to my attention that the school department is also seeking some space and so I have started conversations with Kathy Bodie and uh, toward some of the space with her that is still available that would even if we do enter into a lease agreement with the Arlington Center for the Arts that space will not become immediately occupied it would not be occupied likely until July 1st of uh, 2017 so we still need to find a tenant for the space and for the months that we will not have rent. And the school department will be able to fill some of that space and also pay some portion of rent. So I'm investigating that at this time. Good. Okay. All right. Our designee to the Arlington Preservation Fund. So you have in your packet a letter that you need to It's a vote to nominate me to be the designee to the Arlington Preservation Fund and then be appointed by the Board of Selectmen. So the, the letter actually goes to the Board of Selectmen. I, I gather you've done this in the past for previous directors. It's probably before everyone's time, but yours? I think I came in after I had already you actually did something like this. I think David Fields had been yes. designated. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. But never served. <laughs> I, I had no <laughs> problem with it. Um, that's I right. yeah. Move to authorize the <laughs> chairman to sign the letter uh, for the appointment. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, Jim. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank Yet you. Yet another yes. hat. If I've already attended my first meeting. There you go. <laughs> A meeting crasher. Uh, director's report. Someone just got that. I like that. There is there's a verbal report. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. So, um, what I wanted to talk about are basically three big things and then two sort of updates. So one is just that we're going through staffing changes in the department. I'm not sure if all of you are aware of those changes, but I wanted to bring them to your attention. One is we have a new administrative assistant. Her name's Amy Quinn. Um, Amy Fidalgo had been our administrative assistant for the past two years. Then she moved into the position of the CDBG administrator. In the last couple of weeks, she gave her notice, and Amy Fidalgo is now going to become the management analyst in the town manager's office. Oh, so oh, okay. Eve Taking Eve's position. Yes. Okay. Which is great for her, yeah. but a loss to our department. And so we've posted the CDBG administrator position, which is a very critical position in the office, um, administering our entitlement money from the federal government. You still see that as a full time? I, I'm, putting exactly. on my CPA, I'm putting on my CPA hat. That is definitely a full time job. Okay. Um, and then we are losing Joey Glushko, who is retiring uh, June 30th. Actually, Amy's last day is on June 24th, next Friday. So June 30th, Joey is leaving. We had initially posted her position, which, had, which is actually was a junior planner position. And after assessing the needs of the department with Laura, and um, even taking into account other staff's feelings about the, tran the tran transitions, we decided to up that position to become a senior planner position and also to eliminate our there's this gis technical planner position which that was david field's position it's been open since he left we have been considering going forward with that position which we have a the department had like a quarter contribution towards that position we're taking that funding and adding it to the planner position to create one senior planner, which I think if we have the right person in, we could have somebody who has some GIS and technical planning skills as well as more senior planning skills, which we need desperately at this time. So those are just some staffing updates, which means that essentially it's a little bit of a skeleton crew um, for a couple of months while we get reoriented. So I wanted to let you know of that. Now that I've said that, I'm going away on vacation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a bad segue. <laughs> but it is next, um, starting tomorrow through July 4th. So I'll be back on July 4th. So we don't have another meeting until July 11th is the next meeting. I just wanted to let you know. And Laura and I have discussed the, what's to be done in my absence. And um, 
So if you have any questions about any of that, you can, of course, ask me or direct those questions to Laura. Um, and then I guess that brings up your next meetings. One's July 11th and you're July 25th. Question is, do you want to meet in August? We have sort of a placeholder that just says TBD. Um, but I think we may want to have, like, just schedule, find a date that we can meet in August, and then if we need it, great. If we, then we've got it. If we don't need it, that's fine as well. What may come up? I think there will be a couple more special permits coming up. One for the medical marijuana facility, yeah. and two for a uh, new business that's coming to open up along the bike path. Where's the facility? By the way, <laughs> Eleven Water Street. Water Street. Okay. Yes. There's a lot of stuff flying around in the Arlington Mill and any mills. So. Uh, yes. And we see that because it's the special permit use. So Laura is working with that applicant right now, and I started to work with the applicant for the other property. Anyway, it may either one of these things may or may not hit a July meeting, but I think it would be helpful to have an August date. You know, again, just in case we need that. So that's that's a question to you. If you don't want to do that, then we meet in September. And then I was going to give two more quick updates. I may not be in the July 25th meeting. Uh, yeah. Well, that would mean likely that you'd have to continue a hearing, so yeah. you should, we can continue to some data. I will probably be here, but it's a possibility that I have to. What, what's the hearing? Uh, July 25th. It will likely be for that new business. Yeah, I can't do August 8th and the 20, I can't do the 22nd. I can't do the 8th or the 22nd in uh, August and the 15th might be problematic. Okay. Yeah, free in August. August might go. 15th would be the only one. I, I think I can do the 15th. But. Pick a date and I'll just try to make it. August 15th? Sure. Is the best? It yeah. sounds like mostly, maybe. And this is like a, this is a maybe meeting. Yeah. Definitely. I just wanted to have yeah. it if necessary. Okay. Okay. Um, and then this brings me to a different question, which is I'm wondering if we can move the time of these meetings to 7.30 instead of 7 p.m. That would be possible for everybody. My understanding is in the past they used to be at 7.30. When they move to seven, when they used to go to eleven. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, we seem um, to be wrapping up in two hours. Most of the meetings that I attended. Well, it's, it's, it's a while back. It's been a while. I don't know, maybe eight years. Yeah, not six. Oh. That's for sure. <laughs> I go either way. I, I think I think one of the reasons we always did seven was because of town meeting. And to be able to have an hour uh, before town meeting, I think that was oh, that was true. one of those. You could adjust. Yeah, yeah. What, during it's true. Meeting? I, uh, I think I'm okay with seven thirty. Um, yeah, I think seven thirty is fine. So starting at eleven through seven thirty, or what's the? We could start it on the eleventh, or you could start it in the whatever the meeting is after that, since those meetings have already been posted at seven o'clock. I don't know that that matters. We haven't, we, don't, we haven't done the official agenda. No. So it could move to 7.30 for July 11th. It's fine with me. <laughs> Just remind us. Yeah. I will remind you. Yeah, Thank we'll you. send out actually a revised list of meetings. Fine. All right, and okay. then two more quick updates. So the recodification, zoning recodification working group, last this past Friday was the last day for um, the town manager to accept applications. We have the applications. Um, we're going to be doing some interviews with the applicants, likely when I return in early July, and then hoping to have a first meeting of that working group by late July or early August. So I just wanted to give you that update. And then um, two initiatives, just to bring to your attention, one that you might be familiar with, which is this, the work that we're doing in Arlington Center. Um, including Mass Ave, and then we might be doing some other planning initiatives too with, around Broadway Plaza and other discussions with the 
a group who's interested in supporting Arlington Heights uh, Center. Similar group formed in Arlington Heights called Support Arlington Heights, and we've been working on a planning initiative with that group of individuals, and we'll have a public forum on July 28th. So that's a Thursday night. Um, I believe it's at Dalton School. And that is to uh, share the information that the Support Arlington Heights group has been gathering, which they've been doing a survey, they've been um, you know, conducting some sort of uh, surveys around in that immediate community um, in the neighborhood. And so they'd share that information and we'd be able to give people an opportunity to provide some feedback, bring it to a larger forum in the fall. So, Can you remind me of that when it's closer on there? Yes, that. when I have actually a save the date, uh, okay. send it to you. Those were the only things that I wanted to keep you up to date on. Um, do it. Um, before we move on, what about our fifth and open seat? Sure. I've been talking with the town manager about that and also other people who might know people who could be interested in becoming a member of the board. And I've promised that I would work with uh, that member to move it up the flagpole at the state. Having contacts in the governor's office, I feel strongly that I'd be able to do that. Um, but I haven't. I don't have an individual we, to work with. We don't have it, that individual is no longer okay. interested from last year. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So if any of the members of the board right now have yeah. suggestions, you can it? send yeah. those to. My attention or to Adam's attention. But they have to be, but that is not a point you have to be appointed by the governor. The governor. Yes. It's a gubernatorial appointee. There's an application process that's quite lengthy. But it's, if we have a person who's committed to the process, I can help work with them through that process. Okay. We have to go to five because we're saving money now with the production salary. <laughs> Concerns about the success of uh, uh, the housing. Uh, oh yes. You changed the word success to implement it, or how to implement it. Oh. It, 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 I don't want to. It's implementation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, Andy was not present this meeting. Yeah, well, he was oh, both he's present like, and he's present. Yes, yeah. you know, because he's always with us. That's the way I do. <laughs> That's the way I do. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, you feel good about that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I feel guilty when I miss it. But, yeah, there you go. Oh, see, yeah. your ear is here. With that, I'll, I will. Uh, well, we uh, sorry. Just uh, so one no. other. I just have two small uh, typos. I think in the first sentence. I'm sorry. The second sentence. Uh, Funny how we all catch our, our own things. Uh, in the third paragraph, Mr. Kerr expressed concern. I think you just need an about adopting a plan which includes strategies the town oh, yes. has, and then get rid of the word been previously and then has previously and unsuccessfully proposed. Okay. Thanks. Actually, <laughs> keeping in that, uh, um, it talks about workshops. I don't know what workshops was ever mentioned before that. I would just say it's just been asked about the public process. Um, can you right after the one, Mike just changed oh, okay. the next sentence. I've asked about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I had asked you to explain the public meetings and how this yeah. plan was developed. Okay, so just add the process. Yeah. I'll move to approve the minute as amended. Okay, all second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Anything else? Another business, old business, new business. I'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.